Okay, as we move forward with our definition report parts one and two, um, we're going to rely heavily on, on trying to research in sites that are vetted, in other words, the reliable information. And um, I was really pleased with the variety of topics that you guys have picked and chosen to study. But I want to remind you as you kind of move forward is to go in as objectively as you can. Um, it's never a good idea in research to already have your mind made up. I know that's difficult because many of you are picking like polarizing issues. Um, but try to keep an open mind as you go forward. The, the problem you have if you don't is you run into the uh, issue of only finding sources because that's what you're looking for that support one side as opposed to the other. So we really want to make an effort to look at multiple sides to all these different issues um, to try to get a fresh perspective so that we can reliably kind of report on the information in our, in our essays. Um, so with that in mind, I've got several helpful websites I think that will be um, beneficial to you, and I want to go through some of them uh, with you now. The first one I want to take a look, well, the first one I've already talked about, and that's the, uh, the Pew Research Center here. Uh, hopefully that one's finding uh, some good information, some good statistics data, and addressing most of those questions that you might have. But I also want to take a look at uh, a website called procon.org, one uh, a series called Room for Debate, published by the New York Times, and then uh, factcheck.org, and then a government site, uh, usa.gov. All right, so let's take a look at those kind of one by one. All right, so first of all, what is procon.com? Um, Procon.com is a website, it's a nonprofit put forward by the Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, and what they do is they take a, a host of current issues and you can click to learn more about those issues uh, by visiting the website. Um, but really what you'll do is it'll take you through these pages and you can see how it's set up. You have an issue like kneeling during the national anthem, okay? Then you have the pros and the cons and different arguments that are laid out for those, okay? So it's a good place to start. I know our first task is to try to find information about who's affected by it. It's possible we could get it there, but you might want to bookmark the site just to help. All right. The second site I want to point you to is one called Room for Debate. Um, and Room for Debate has been around a while. Uh, I don't know that it's being updated as much. Uh, the latest articles seem to be from 2017, but some of your issues will be covered there. And what I like about this site is if you click into, uh, into one, what you get are several people. It's divided, okay, who are debating on each side of the issue. And many of them raise good points. Many of them are experts in the field uh, that they're studying, which is a good plus, okay? All right. Your second or your third site is one called factcheck.org. Now, factcheck.org could be a useful site because you can ask particular questions and they will show you um, a, a variety of different places where those questions are being answered, okay? Um, and you can ask a particular question, is this a valid site? So maybe in your research you find something and you're questioning it. You can always ask fact-checked and they'll respond to you. All right, and then the next and final site I want to look at um, is the government website, and that is uh, USA.gov. And this is basically government reports that have been released um, and under the Freedom of Information Act. So the government researches almost everything under the sun, and it's considered to be fairly reliable um, as far as the site. So you simply type, type in the... Um, whatever it is that you're looking for, the topic, and see if they have any information related to that. Okay? All right. So, once again, these are um, four specific sites that you can go to that could be helpful for you. And then a couple of reminders as you kind of move forward. Um, please try to keep an eye out for accuracy and bias on your website. I mean, it starts with basically looking at who is publishing the information, the website host. Um, your sites we've talked a little bit about before, you know, your .edu sites and .gov sites, um, and even your .org, some of your .orgs are generally reliable, but not always. 
particularly with .edu sites, even though a university might publish it, it still might be a personal page belonging to a professor or a student at that university. So you might want to double check that. Um, I would recommend as much as possible staying away from .com sites if, if at all possible, unless you can check out you know, the writers and find out something about them. Which leads me to the next and final point. How do you test the reliability of your author? How do you know, you know what you're dealing with? Um, and what you can do is pay attention to what you can find out about the author's name. There's usually, if you click on the name, there's usually, if it's hyperlinked, you'll get information about this person. They can tell you what their expertise is in whatever field they're writing about. Uh, you might check, too, to see if they're affiliated with anything that might cause you to question the validity of what it is that they're writing. Um, you'll usually find that information either at the author's name or at the bottom uh, about the on the About Us. Okay, You might check to see if his information or her information appears in other sources. So how verifiable is it? Okay.